It's Jim Weber, otherwise known as Cowboy, started in 1966 in uh, downtown Camden. Mm -hmm. Okay, what was your One first building. project? Uh, you know, my first project was actually uh, a, a multiplier for a, a hard uh, shuttle, you know, a, a hard uh, uh, shelter. And I was a, I had to do the multiplier for this frequency chain that would hit a satellite mm -hmm. for a radio. It was basically radios. Okay. Um, did you have any mentors or anything when you started? No. Okay. No, unfortunately I didn't. I wish I had, but I didn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, talk about um, some of the major projects that you've worked on. Well, uh, I worked on uh, the uh, radar shelters uh, initially. I don't remember the name of them. But after that, I worked on the P-3C aircraft. And uh, I also worked on the uh, sub chasers. Uh, I worked on the Trident Missile Submarine. You remember that yeah. program, IR Squared. And you, <laughs> you were pretty big in that. I also worked on the, uh, the uh, destroyers, the... Uh, the radios, the telephone system uh, on there, uh, and uh, I got I got to ride on a P three C aircraft and and run test. We did a lot of testing on it, actually flying, uh, and I got to ride on a submarine. But they, uh, because I had I was involved with the HF radio, did the, the thing didn't submerge. It had to submerge. It had to stay up. So I never got to submerge. Mm -hmm. So I did get to ride on it. Cool. Uh, all that was exciting. I never got to the destroyer either. Mm -hmm. But uh, the um, uh, f if, if eventually what happened was was that the Navy shut down all of its depots for the P3C radio. And they were in a jam. They needed them for the plane, and they, they couldn't fix them. And they came to me personally and asked me because I had done a lot of business with them throughout the years going on to the you know places uh, fixing it and they asked me if I would start a depot and I did I created a depot with uh, Marty Watson who was my uh, PMO guy and he helped me convince management that a project would make money and it made millions. That was my last project before I retired. Where did you get the parts? Uh, you know, we made we made a lot of them. Believe it or not, we made the coils. Uh, I used I did have a job in between all this when there wasn't work as a maintenance spares guy, finding obsolete parts. That was my specialty, and I knew how to find obsolete parts all throughout the country or have them built. So. What was obsolete, we, I fixed. I got a tube guy to remake the tube. I had two tube people because we had a tube on that radio. And I was, uh, you know, adept at finding things. I found everything. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, now, you worked on the Apollo program. Did yes, you know? I did. What, would you, what did you do on that? Uh, we, we actually were responsible for the ranging. In other words... Uh, the way it worked was that there was two modules that were shot off at the end. There was called a lunar module and a command module. The command module dropped the lunar module to the ground. The command module continued to stay in orbit around the moon. Okay, and it was as it was rotating around, the guy in the bottom did what he did, took samples, and then he came up. Our job now was to, to lock them up. We had ranging built into the radio with a digital display, and that's all they could see. They looked at the digital display, and they would go right and left and up and down, and would take them right in, and it worked. And that's when we were praying, please lock up. <laughs> Don't let it be my fault if it doesn't. Well, they locked up successfully, and then they shot off. The, the guys in the lunar module climbed into the command module 
and then they had explosive bolts and they dropped the lunar module, just let it stay in orbit, and it came back to Earth. And it worked. And we were... Had you doing, heard the rumors that the rendezvous radar that was supposed to do that was very suspect as yeah. whether it may not be able to do it? We were the backup. Right, that was supposed to be the primary, the radar. That was the primary lockup. But how did you know that? I thought it was <laughs> Sam oh, okay. I didn't know. I didn't know anybody else knew that. No, that uh, it may have worked. It may have worked, but they liked our uh, the astronauts had like the you know they and they were doing this mock up. You know, they kind of liked that digital thing. Mm -hmm. It seemed a little you know, and it was tricky. Because we had to have ranging built in over voice, so that was uh, that was quite an art doing that. In fact, uh, that's you know that's how I got my nickname too. You remember that, right? Well, we we had to vibrate each radio, okay. Uh, we had put them on a shaker table and turned them on and watched them while we vibrated like this to see if they work. Well. While they were doing that, this, this squelch broke. And they said, whoever fix it. So I jumped up on top of the module with a newt stick, right? And I was adjusting it. And people walked in as I was adjusting this thing while vibrating. They said, hey, I mean, he looked just like a cowboy up there. And that, that was the beginning of my nickname. It lasted me till I retired. Mm -hmm. And beyond. <laughs> and beyond. Um, did you have any involvement in the Apollo 13 incident? The response to that? No, what was that? Uh, That's where the spaceship basically blew up and they had to get them back to Earth? No. Oh, okay. No, I didn't, have, I didn't have any on that one, no. Okay. okay. So you also worked uh, on the uh, Trident program. Yeah. The, yeah, it was a radio for the, uh, you know, for the sub. Well, what did you do on that? Well, I just, we basically built it. <laughs> we, we, I designed some of the circuitry, and uh, we built it specifically for the uh, submarine. And uh, it, can, it can only be used when they, you know, were on the surface. And uh, it, it worked pretty good. I think it worked out fine. It was one of the only ways they could, you know, do long haul communication. How do you think RCA in general valued you as part of these projects? I, you know, I go back to the family again. It really seemed like they did. They, they were very much family, very much concerned about, you know, people. They had to do layoffs once in a while. And um, I got involved in that aspect too. I don't know if you, you probably didn't know that one, did you? Yeah, I was on the grievance committee for the union. There's only two uh, professional engineering labor unions in the country, and that's uh, uh, Seattle and, and us, Boeing out there, but in Seattle, and RCA. They were the only two. And we did have an, an engineering union, and I was, uh, uh, I was very strong in it. I was, you know. You mentioned the RCA family. Elaborate on that. What did that mean to you? It, it was really like a family. People cared for each other. People looked out for each other. Uh, anytime you had a problem, if you had a problem, everybody would come to your rescue. You know, even, even if, it, if it was for work or for golf or for skiing, you know. And I still golf with the same guys that, uh, you know, that I work with. And I still ski with the same guys I would ski with. You know, it's still family. I still see them around. We still hang out. Um, so how did it feel to retire from RCA? It, it was strange because, you know, I had it easy towards the end of the, my career because I had that depot up and running. You know, it was a bear to get it started, but then after that it rolled along quite smoothly and I didn't have a whole lot to do. You know, if I was lucky if I worked four hours a day at those, in those times, but I got the job done, and uh, I kind of enjoyed it. I hated to leave everybody, you know, <laughs> it felt like I was leaving, 
But uh, I was 66 when I retired, and my wife wanted to retire. She was a little younger. And uh, so we decided we should be traveling and seeing things uh, before it's all over, before we couldn't. That's so why was, I retired. What was the best thing about working for RCA? I think the people. That'd be, that, was, that was my opinion, the people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about your supervisors? They were all fine, you know. I, some of them didn't like me. Some did. You know, it's just that's the way it is with all supervisors. You know. <laughs> what was the worst thing about working for RCA? Uh, there's a lot of overtime sometimes. You really had to, you know, give things up. Spend a lot of extra time. Uh, the worst part was when I was in management. See, I was an engineer in most of my career, but I went into management for about five or six years. Those were the worst years of my life because I had the people, you know, I had to, you know, talk, you know, I had to deal with a lot of different people. I had to put in a lot of unpaid overtime. <laughs> you remember that? Oh, yeah. You know, work 50, 55 hours a week, you pay for 40, and that was, you know, and it was, uh, you know, first level management's always, a, you know, a bear. So when, G, when GE took over, they did me a favor. They said we were getting rid of that level of management throughout the corporation, and that was my level. And they asked me where I wanted to go. I said, back in engineering, please. That's where I went back, and I was happy. Now, they talk about RCA changing South Jersey. Did you see any of that? Do you feel that that's a valid description? Oh, absolutely, sure. I mean, the whole, everybody worked for RCA South Jersey. So, you know, there was stuff built, you know. There's uh, lots of businesses downtown at that time, if you remember, long ago. Movies, two movie theaters, Horn and Hearted. <laughs> you know, the town was booming. And all around, all the restaurants, it, uh, that affected everybody. It spread out. Let's talk a little more about your co-workers. Hmm. Uh, I still hang out with them. You know, I, I like my co-workers. I didn't have any trouble with any of them. I, uh, when I was uh, on the grievance committee, I handled their grievances. I saved a lot of people from being laid off. I was infallible after I got out of management. Before I went into management, I was a grievance guy, and I only won about half of my cases. After I came out of management, I won them all. And they were saying, you know, you've heard all that stuff in meetings, and that's, that's considered private. I said, no, it isn't. <laughs> Not for me. Call Earl Sass. Oh, there's one. That's the guy, Earl Sass. He was one of my. He was the guy that actually promoted my career. He's the guy that made me go into management. He's the guy that like salvaged me at a very early stage when people thought I was a little crazy and a little reckless. And Earl Sass came to my my aid, saved me, put me on the path. And then later, I were, and that was early, and then later on I was working for him again, and then he made me a manager. So he was, uh, he died recently. Yeah. Sounds something like a mentor. He was a mentor, yeah, definitely. Okay. For how long in your career? <sighs> Ten years, maybe, maybe more, maybe 20. Charlie Montini was another one. I don't know if you remember him. Yeah. He was another one. He said it like it was. <laughs> How did you keep up with the technology? Uh, it, I, I took some courses in software and, uh, you know, basic machine code software. That's what I became a specialist in. And, uh, you know, I took after-hours classes all the time. I was always in some some class that, that we held, you remember. And... Uh, I wrote some software to, to tune couplers, and it worked out pretty good. We didn't sell it, but it worked. So I did some things, you know, modern. 
kept up to date. Well, the integrated circuits I use for my new designs, you know, for the the uh, ERC-88 had some integrated circuits in it that were, you know, different. What's your assessment of, what do you think the rest of the world looked at RCA, their assessment in the community and in the uh, technology? They, they were on top for a while. You know, the community loved them, of course, because they're, you know, it was work and everything else, a lot of spinoffs, but uh, their products were great. You know, the, the TVs, all their stuff. You know, there's been competition. I still think we had a little problem with a GE takeover. I don't think that ever should have happened, but... That keeps coming up. Why don't you mm -hmm. elaborate on that? Well, I, I don't get it. I don't understand why they did it. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't. And uh, they didn't have to. You know, they didn't have to do it. I, that's my opinion. So I what like changed it. when they did? Everything. <laughs> there, all kinds of, there was a lot of changes made. Uh, actually, in some cases, the, their, health, their health and pension was for the better. So some things got a little bit better. Uh, but, uh, you know, the I don't know. The, we could have done it ourselves, I think. Mm -hmm. Did the RCA family um, continue on even after the acquisition? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Because so we became you... L3, you know. We did get spun off again. Yeah. Yeah. So I actually retired from L3 Communications. You know, that was, uh, you know, that's another, another operation. <laughs> so how would you sum up your time at RCA, your career um, at RCA? I wouldn't give it up at all. I'd do the same thing. Yeah, I mean, I might make a few changes, but not much. Yeah, I, uh, I enjoyed working there. Okay. I work for other companies, so I, you know. <laughs> well, compare that. Uh, they weren't as family oriented. They, you know, they. Some of the places people weren't even friendly, uh, and some places they ratted you out. You know, I got ratted out some for, for things. Uh, I had a job shop. And I was working as a draftsman, and I asked the people if I could take a day off. And they said, fine. And the guy asked me, where are you going? Where are you taking a day? I said, I'm going to interview for this government job. So he goes and tells them. And uh, when I come back, they fired me. <laughs> if you can go and interview for another job, you're out of here. You know, I hadn't decided to take that job yet. So that's, you know, there was, or she wasn't like that. I mean, maybe there were some, but not much. Okay. Anything else you want to uh, add to, uh, to this? Oh. No, I think that pretty much sums it up. Do you have anything, Tony? No. <laughs> she liked one of the parties, mm -hmm. the RCA party. She liked those. The uh, they were they were fun. The uh, you remember those? You guys had them. And what was his name? Uh, the 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 PMO. Uh, Hugh Montgomery? Yeah, Hugo Montgomery. Remember Hugo Montgomery, the way he would throw parties? Outrageous. You remember that? Oh, God. The bar will close in a half hour. So everybody rushes and gets a drink. Uh, I think I'll keep the bar open for another half hour. And everybody rushes up and gets another drink. Before that, you know it, everybody's drunk. It's true. Well, I'm just saying, that's just the way things were. Yeah, they can cut that. <laughs> but you worked hard. Oh, yeah. And you partied hard. Yep, yeah. we did. Yes, exactly. <laughs>